Uprzedzę, że kolejne nasze webinarium to jest 7 kwietnia, więc też serdecznie zapraszamy. Mamy nadzieję, że kolejne pojawią się jeszcze w naszym kalendarzu. Poproszę Panią Dziekan teraz o też kilka słów, zanim przejdziemy do, do kolejnego punktu. Potem Pani, może proszę, ja by, można wytłumaczyć, tak? Tak, tak, tak. tak. Szanowni Państwo, jest mi niezmiernie miło, że po raz kolejny możemy się spotkać. Temat jakże ciepły i bliski, podążając za moimi korzeniami. Myślę, że każdy z nas tego będzie szukał i w sobie będzie posiadał, więc tym bardziej z wielką radością uczestniczę w dzisiejszym seminarium. Gratuluję Lubuskiej Młodzieżowej Akademii Bezpieczeństwa tematu i dzisiejszego spotkania. Trzymam kciuki za studentów i dziękuję Państwu przede wszystkim, że zgodziliście się wziąć udział w dzisiejszym spotkaniu, bo to Wy jesteście bohaterami. Także życzę owocnych obrad i przede wszystkim samych jak najlepszych wrażeń i pewnych przemyśleń, które spowodują, że dalej będziemy rozważać te nasze korzenie i będziemy zastanawiać się, jak to dalej zrobić, żeby było dobrze. Wszystkiego dobrego. Dziękuję. Bardzo dziękujemy. I Brajsko, ja będę wytłumaczyć. A, to ty? מברכת את המעמד הזה ומאוד שמחה לפתח בשיעור הזה או יותר נכון במפגש הזה בסדרה של מפגשים שעושים בשורשים כי לכל אחד יש שורשים ומודה לנו על השיתוף הפעולה ומקווה שיהיו לנו עוד הרבה מפגשים ביחד ושהתוכנית תלך ותתרחב והסטודנטים מספרם ילך ויגדל וזה בהחלט תוכנית חשובה. Bardzo ja, dziękujemy jeszcze, za pomoc. ja jeszcze chciałem, zanim się zacznie, taki, taki komentarz, e, informacja taka techniczna. Spotkanie będzie nagrywane i uczestnictwo w spotkaniu jest jednoznaczne ze wyrażeniem e, zgody. A słucham, że mam się akole muklat, wyjeżdżę go mieć spot bez achalkach. Bardzo dziękuję. Chciałabym teraz przekazać jeszcze głos naszemu moderatorowi, moderatorowi naszej studentce, pani Ilonie Freind. Bardzo dziękujemy ponieważ spotkanie jest też z inicjatywy i współ, współorganizatorami naszego spotkania są studenci. Także bardzo dziękuję i przekazuję Pani Ilonie głos. Yes, hello, I am today to participate in your story, to hear your story, but also to moderate, also to translate for you in English or if someone want Uh, to ask a question in Polish, I will also translate it for you, so you can always ask me to trans translate something, I will also ask questions, so I will uh, speak today with you in English and help you. We are very glad that you will today say to us your story first time. We are very, very um, unspeakable about this, we are very happy, so we cannot wait to hear your story. Thank you. Uh, wow, thank you very much. Um, I am very excited from this uh, um, moment uh, to and tell my story. And as I said before, especially that my mother and perhaps afterwards also my father uh, will hear this, will hear this because they know the story, but they never show uh, seen it like I will do it today. So I will share my presentation and we'll start. Okay. Gal, to what's a little Okay, you see, okay, you see the following my roots. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Okay. I'm a Tsegetchil. Okay. So um, my name is Inbal Raz. Uh, I'm the deputy director in Mashmaut Center. And in the last years, I am building a puzzle. But unlike uh, the puzzles we buy in stores, I don't know how many pieces there are in my puzzle. And every time I reveal a new piece, it only enlarges it. Anyone who ever built a puzzle knows that the best way to work is to start with the frame and only then to fill in the different middle areas. So here is the frame for my Polish family puzzle. 
the one I built until now, but it is still not the full picture. I am a granddaughter of four Holocaust survivors from Poland. I'm also a daughter of a child that was born during the Holocaust in 1941, but these background details of my family's history were not a main part of my childhood and growing up. You can see in the picture here, uh, on the left you see my the father of my father, my grandfather from my father's side, and on the right you see my grandfather and grandmother from my mother's side. We don't have uh, you don't see the, my grandmother from my father's side because we don't have a picture of her and I will speak about it later. Um, my parents arrived to Israel as um, young children. My, ma my father arrived when he was eight years old and my mother was four years old. So if you ask them, they left their history behind and they were born Israelis. I never heard the Polish language in my family. Many years later, my mother will tell me, of course I spoke Polish with my parents, but I have no recollection of that. Sometimes I heard Yiddish, but that was only when the adults didn't want us to understand. And in my case, it worked for them. I only know and understand few words in Yiddish. My grandmother cooked traditional Jewish Polish food but it was served together with hummus and trina or other Middle East tastes, and the recipes almost didn't transfer to the next generation. Even if my mother knew, she rarely cooked for us traditional Polish Jewish food. Our kitchen was Israeli, influenced from the different Jewish communities and cultures that arrived to Israel, and the same goes with my kitchen today. I rarely saw a picture of Poland, and if I saw, it was an ancient, ancient uh, black and white picture in a memorial book of the Lancer Jewish community um, and some stories about the Graf Potocki, how they were once invited to his palace and how they were the first Polish city with electricity thanks to him. I don't know if it's true, but my grandmother was very proud about that. Poland was never mentioned as a country to visit, I never heard Polish music, I never saw Polish film or newspaper, and I never heard any of my family members longing to the country they were born in. Poland and the Polish culture were quite far from me. Um, the first time I learned a little bit about the places my grandparents came from was when I learned in the seventh grade and I wrote a research work about their communities. I read and wrote about their lives in their communities before the war, uh, their schools, their synagogue, activities, cultural activities, and more. Uh, here you can see in the picture my grandmother when she go to the um, Bnei Akiva youth movement in the circle. And you can also see uh, the three memorial book before you saw the Lancet memorial book, which helped me to learn. So uh, I learned about the synagogues, culture activities and more. And at the end of this work, I made a short interview with my grandmother. My grandfather was already passed away. But since I was young and she didn't talk a lot about the Holocaust uh, at that time, I only asked her in the interview to tell me about their preparation after the war to make Aliyah to come to Israel and the difficulties that came with moving to a new country with no langu language or work. When I was in high school, we didn't have journeys to Poland yet. And so only after I started to work in Mashmaut Center, I, find, I found myself going to Poland for the first time with a group of educators we organized in 1997. It was clear for me then that I'm going to Poland to learn about the past, the past of our nation in general, a past that is connected to my family, but I wasn't looking for anything too personal in this journey. One day during the journey, we arrived to Lancet, and suddenly words of my grandmother became alive. The Graf Potocki Palace and the blue and beautiful synagogue um, and, the bu and the blue and beautiful synagogue she described from a youth in the city. 
In the entrance of the synagogue, there were some fragments of tombstones, and suddenly I saw I saw Mulrad, the young, the youth name of my grandmother, Bronya. I was very moved and excited with this finding, but, see, but uh, since there were no cell phones yet, and I couldn't call my family immediately, we just took some pictures and drove away. I, rem I remember thinking with myself while we were moving away that this was the first time uh, in my life that I was so moved by a tombstone, even though I don't know the person himself or our connection. When I came back home and show the picture to my of the of the tombstone to my grandmother, she said she don't know who this man was. Of course, I was disappointed with the, with her answer. But years later, when I will start to follow my roots, I will learn that there were many Milrads in Lansot. Many of them even lived in the same street until people started to call it the Milrad Street. The years passed quickly and my grandmother passed away in 2002 and I continued to work, learn and develop in Mashmout Center. In 2005, we started to talk again in the center about taking a group to Poland as a part of a project called Under Common Sky with the Polish Institute in Israel. This time, my father, brother and sister decided to come with me. My mother, on the other hand, didn't want to hear about visiting Poland. I guess she was influenced by my grandmother who never wanted to hear about visiting Poland again and wasn't happy when she knew that one of us did visit there. I think, although I never talked about that with my grandmother, that she was angry and especially hurt when her neighbors in Lanzo didn't help them when they were deported from their homes. I know now that the situation was difficult and complex and how dangerous it was to help Jews. But for her, they were her neighbors and friends. My grandmother with her, with her